Okay, I'm starting this video and wanted to show you that I'm working on some, experimenting with some Paul Damaris oil sticks. And I have um, two, four, six, seven, black and white. And I've got transparent alizarin orange, ultramarine blue. This one is yellow ochre and transparent violet and my cadmium red medium. And these come in twos, very much like RNF pigment sticks too. Um, however, there are some differences that I've noticed because I've always used RNF pigment sticks in the past, but these are brand new. And I've been uh, talking a lot with Paul because as I've been experimenting with these, I really like them. And one of the reasons I really like them is because they seem to dry faster than RNF pigment sticks. And just, just like the RNF pigment sticks, he does also have like um, a blending stick and he's got so many colors. So I'm gonna turn my camera down and just show you how I'm experimenting on some Arches oil paper. And while I do have some uh, oil paints mixed with cold wax medium, I kind of wanna just play with these sticks and maybe just a little bit of cold wax medium to see how they, they move around and blend. So I may do that as well, but mainly I wanna just test out, you know, the, the, the softness of the stick and, and then I'm gonna do a test to see how long it takes for these to dry. Okay, so I'm gonna switch my camera. All right, so here's my four square sheet of paper. It's just Arches oil paper, one of my favorite surfaces to work with. And, you know, part of it for me is um, because every brand, um, obviously Paul Damaris has, you know, his own brand colors. And so now I have not taken, like I haven't taken a razor blade and removed the skin that would normally be on say an RNF pigment stick. And that's pretty remarkable to me that I wouldn't have to waste a lot of paint just getting that skin off. So um, right off the bat, you know, I'm just testing these out to see what happens. And they're, they're really juicy and lovely. Like, you know, the tip did break off, um, but I, it's okay. Like that happens with RNF pigment sticks as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go move into the blue and this is ultramarine blue. And I kind of wanna see what happens when you just blend them together. So this is not gonna be a, a very vibrant purple. And the reason is that there is uh, yellow in this cad red. It, it kind of leans toward the, a warmer red. Um, the blue has, uh, it's also a warm blue. So there's, there's a bit of yellow present and that's why when you mix the two you don't get a vibrant purple but knowing why is is really important so then i am going to add just a little bit of this white you know to to see kind of what kind of a tint i would get and i'm just moving around with my finger because i love to use my hands when i paint now i can also come into this um desaturated purple and see what a tint of that would be like so that's really cool um, you can leave the paint thick in some areas and thinner in others. And, you know, really for me, this is a, a, a test of the color interactions and the sticks themselves. So here's like the beautiful yellow ochre. It just goes on like so beautifully. You don't have to press very hard. Now this is looking a little bit transparent, which normally, you know, the normally yellow ochre is not a transparent. So if it's a little bit transparent, that makes it unique. And so I'm just gonna mix in a little bit of white and then I'm gonna bring this yellow ochre close to the blue and close to the red. So I can see the interaction between these colors. Um, add back some blue, add back some red, closer to my uh, yellow ochre. Again, just looking for color interactions here. And so I'm going to mix these two guys together. And that's just, uh, anytime you mix any two colors together, you're going to get a bit of desaturation. But that's just a really lovely, um, well, how would you describe that? It's kind of a dusty blue. It hasn't gone very green. Let me add a little bit more blue over here. And I'm going to see if I can get um, some real mixing together here, one-on-one. -on -one. And sure enough, it's going to go green. So I just didn't have maybe equal quantities of the two colors. But I mean, even this play is really, really fun. I love to do things like this where there are no expectations. And I would categorize this kind of thing that I'm doing is just, you know, 
research, basically. And uh, without any expectations, I, I really want to get to know the nature of these pigment sticks and how quickly they dry, how soft they are, because every brand of oil stick has its own characteristics. And if you don't spend time really getting to know what those characteristics are, then you know you might have either a pleasant surprise or an unpleasant surprise because you didn't really work with them and, and test them out. So, um, so far I'm really, really liking, like this is a primary palette right here, the ultramarine blue, the cad red medium, and then this yellow ochre. And instead of using say cad yellow, I'm using the ochre. Uh, it's really lovely. And then, you know, I can come down here with some very expressive lines. And I'm going to keep it like for this particular uh, square or rectangle, I'm going to just stay with these colors because I want to kind of experiment with more limited palettes. And that's why I've got these four different quadrants so that I can really do that. And then there's also this beautiful white. So I can, instead of using the white paint, I can use the pigment stick and then here's the black. So if I put a little bit of black there, a little bit of black here, I'm going to experience shades. Okay, so um, it's just so cool when they're in stick form because you don't have to really have the, the cold wax and oil on the side. Okay, so you can kind of see where the colors have blended. Um, they're really lovely. And again, I can keep adding, say, this yellow ochre and blending them with my hand. Then there's white down here of the white pigment stick, the white oil stick. And so um, getting a feeling for how those blend. And how can I, let's see, I'm, well, I'll come back with this white stick in a second, but you know, drawing back into this is also um, like who knows what's gonna happen there. This red goes on, it's so luscious. And okay, so there's more of dark. So we'll get a shade of the beautiful red. I'll bring that down here. And there's a nice gray where the white and the black combined. I mean, your whole, if you did a, a large painting, this would be very cool, just seeing how these colors interact. Let me put some more white here. I'm gonna basically put white where the white paper is right now, just to make sure I get some nice open space and it's fun to draw with this pigment stick. So I'm gonna use the white there. I don't have a lot of black, but I um, don't wanna to go too dark with this. So I'm controlling that. And let's mix some white with the yellow ochre here. It's a very intuitive process uh, when you uh, experiment and, and say, I like to call it research. <laughs> And I know that artists may not realize it, but they are doing research when they spend time exploring their materials, any new kind of brand of paint or new medium, new brushes, new tools, uh, whether they're texture tools or whatever. And you know, you can call it what you want, but what you're really doing is you're curious. And so you're trying to figure out what happens if you do this or that. Well, that's what science is. It's asking questions and saying, what if I do this? What if I do that? Okay, so here I'm going to bring back the blue because now I have a lot of worms, but I don't have many cool. So I'm drawing back into this wet paint and look at how lovely it just draws right through it. Um, so very expressive mark making these sticks provide that opportunity. You don't have to use dry mark making tools. You can actually use the sticks themselves. And here I'm going to add some white to where the black is down here. Go gray. So they're soft, but I actually like that because uh, it just gives you a little bit more blending. You know, like these are really luscious and they blend really well. So I'm going to come back in with white. Here's the white, mixing with the blue. I can leave some of that line in there. And then of course, you can always come in with your pencil and uh, draw right back into this, which is fun. I love marks. So um, playing with that a little bit and then coming in and like, let's say I wanna just make this one disappear a bit. So I have more of a lost and found line. And here's like a white, 
um, open area. So I'm going to add some white to this and some yellow ochre to that and blend. So very quickly, I cover this entire little rectangle with um, these lovely blended colors. And this is super fun. I'm going to put this in once it dries, I will add this to my sketchbook. What I do is I like to experiment with color combinations, do these four squares, let them dry. And then I mark the back as to what colors I use. So I don't forget, this is my way of like testing out different colors. And, but these are beautifully soft, not too soft. I mean, yes, it did, the tip broke off, but that happens with with all of those pigment sticks, like the RNFs do that as well. So that's not unique to this at all. Um, I can take the black and come back in here again and just, um, I do have pencil, but there's nothing like a juicy oil line like that. Very, very expressive sticks here. So um, I'll lay these out a little bit better so you can actually see them. Now that the camera is so close, I know you can't see them all, but, um, and I will, I will mix the palettes up as I go to these other quadrants. And so the blue is kind of isolated right now. I kind of notice that, you know, and it's not that I'm trying to make this a finished painting or anything like that, but just it's just an observation that I might want a little bit more blue um, in different locations. So make it a little bit more harmonious and so just a little bit there. It's predominantly warm right now and i think i'll add a little bit more of this yellow ochre up here so i'm going back and forth and you know even even like marks like this are kind of fun you don't all have to be smeared and soft and amorphous just leaving some hole like that is fine at least i like that and uh they also, you know, when you come back into it like this, they're actually kind of subtractive because they are moving paint around. You can do the same thing like with this red, but maybe a thinner line like this. So um, yeah, luscious and beautiful. Take the white and maybe move back into here. Even though these are, you know, like experimental and, and I'm not trying to make a finished painting, I still feel like it's always good to practice your sense of design, no matter what you're doing, um, even when you're playing. And, and you're, you know, it's not like a big serious painting or anything, but why not um, make it something that you enjoy? Um, the way the marks are going, the way the transparency and opacity are, shapes that are evolving, anything that's in front of you, you can ask yourself, well, do I like this or do I want to change it? And here I'm blending more, so I'm going to really get desaturation and more grays, but that feels good when there are these, um, these marks and things. So, Okay, so now I'm going to move on to another palette. Let me see. I've got this transparent alizarin orange. That's got to be gorgeous. And the violet. So orange and violet. Um, and these are both uh, going to be transparent, so it'd be nice to have one that is opaque black is opaque white is opaque and i will be using white and opaque but let's see here i think i'll add maybe the blue because the blue and the alizarin orange are going to be nice together so let me just uh try something a little bit different here so i'm just going to come in here with the blue it's randomly like this and then the orange and again i'm going to be blending a lot using some of that white. I'm not sure if I'll bring the violet in on this one. Maybe I'll just leave it to these two colors. They're complements. And so right off the bat, I wanna see how they blend together. I can add a bit of this white in various places and get tints. So I'll come here and see what a light blue looks like. And I already know that from this one, but now I've got a different color in the mix. And I'm not using any cold wax at the moment because these already have, you know, wax in them. They're very compatible if you work with cold wax and oil. 
So I'm just going into the marks and seeing how that interacts, uh, getting some blending, but I don't want to blend everything. So let's see here. Can work back into that. Just having fun with it. There's some beautiful um, shapes I can make with this going around the blue. So you can definitely draw with these. And I want to cover all of my white paper with either this white or I could come in with, you know, cold wax medium, but right now I'm sticking with just the sticks. It's fun, like you could say to yourself, well, what if I didn't have any cold wax? I ran out of it and all I have are these sticks. Can I do a painting with just these sticks? And I'm sure you could. Um, it would be different than, you know, using all the palette knives and tools and things like that. But look at how amazing that is. And then you can always come into this, like I have this really cool, um, you know, pointy palette knife and um, you know, coming back in here and it's seeing what this will do. So you can certainly work on texture if you want. See how it drags through the paint. And I haven't added any pencil marks yet, so I usually like to do that. But then spreading that around and um, take some of the white and put it down here around the edge. Fun, just fun, really fun. I'm gonna um, just like to use my fingernails too and see how I can make marks. So sometimes just not having a lot of tools and just working with say your hands, your fingers, your fingernails. Um, it's just kind of fun to see what you can do with minimal tools and here's that pencil again so i can come in here and just add some lighter marks just for a change and right away it's picking up paint so it is a subtractive thing as well as an additive thing because if i press harder i get you know these marks but if i just come in lightly then it's actually lifting removing paint so it's subtractive uh, very cool though Find the contour of some of these shapes. All right, so that's a slightly different palette. And before I forget, because I often do forget, and then um, I try not to do that, I'm going to put that these are um, these pub mirrors. You know, this is just on the, I'm writing this on the tape. So when I remove the tape, I have to transfer the information to the back side. But this one, these are the oil sticks. Uh, this one would be the primary of um, CAD Red Medium, Ultramarine Blue, and Yellow Ochre. Sometimes I abbreviate them. This one would be the um, Alizarin Orange. It's not going to write on top of the oils there. I can do it over here just so that you have notes. And then this is the ultramarine blue and then black and white, of course. Black and white for me is just always kind of a given. So there's my little notation there. Okay, so now I haven't tried um, the purple yet. So I'm gonna turn this around and come back in over here, this quadrant. And this time I'll put in some marks um, first. Just real loose like this. Here's my white. So maybe what I'll do is just kind of draw on top of those marks with the white. You know, you can't see that, but it's there. Then I'm going to take this beautiful violet. Can't wait to see what this looks like. Now notice I am not peeling off any, <laughs> any skin of any kind, which means you're not going to waste much at all because you don't have to get out a razor blade and and get off that skin, which is something that I always feel like I'm, I'm losing a lot of, say like an RNF pigment stick. 
and and they are quite expensive. Um, I do feel like these are more economical. So if if you feel like um, the Arnak pigment sticks are too costly, um, definitely check these out because um, they come in wonderful sets with beautiful colors. So here I'm just adding, you know, uh, that beautiful transparent violet. And since yellow ochre is kind of a complement, the it's a yellowish color complement of a violet, um, I can easily bring this in. So I've got two colors playing against one another. And I'll see some shades, some tones, and some tints. So where the white mixes with the black, you get the gray. And then mixing it with the ochre, get a beautiful blend. And then it comes into this beautiful transparent violet. It's fun. Beautiful. Just so much fun to play with these. Um, and you know, the thing about this too is that these oftentimes what I find when I'm doing these four squares is what I'm playing is, you know, after this is play, if you further develop them, because they can be developed, even though I say this is an experiment and, you know, maybe that's all I want to do with it, but it doesn't mean that you might not want to develop some further which simply means once this dries or you're ready to move back into it, you can continue to develop it. And then maybe this is just an underpainting, right? So um, any of those things are possible. If you're inspired to continue to work on it, then you would continue to work on it. So then just adding this back in, a little bit of saturation or more highly saturated yellow ochre. Um, Mixing and blending with that purple to get a gorgeous gray. And then mixing with that white to see the, the tint of the gray. Sometimes the gray is more yellowish and other times it's more violet. But even just having, because I'm only using my hands here, having these marks that I make with my fingers um, is a really nice contrast. to say even a dry brush edge or a, a rough edge that is from these sticks. So you don't have to blend everything. You can leave some things intact just the way they are. Uh, here I'm gonna come in and you know make some other additional marks with the white. And come in over here. And then pencil. I mean I started with a pencil, but then a lot of it got covered up. So I come in again. And then you can also take an eraser and just for kicks, you know, you can lift with an eraser. And here I've got so just a white eraser. I think it's a Stetler. It's got its little covering off, so I can't be sure. But um, you can come in here and definitely use this as like a lifting tool and make some cool marks with that. It's also going to blend. You know, it can also blend. So here I can use it to actually blend. It's got such a soft and luscious um, composition here, uh, these pigment sticks do. So I can just draw back into it. And then if I wanted to bring some violet back in like this, a little darker, that's the black, oops. Okay, so let's bring this violet back. So if I wanted to lift this, let me just see if I can grab one of these. Um, silicone tools and yeah sure you can subtract like that which is nice some interesting effects that way and um breaking up some of the shapes okay so this one i'm going to label this i'll use my sharpie and this one is the transparent Violet and yellow ochre. Again, just a few little notes. Then I can scoot this over like that. Okay, what's left? What colors haven't I? And this is really just um, a select number. There are so many colors in this set that I have, uh, but I'm just trying to uh, choose a more um, a smaller set of 
colors here and see what I can do. So I think I'm going to take this cad red, which I love. And this is just such a gorgeous, soft um, pigment and I'll make some large areas here. Then I'm going to take this transparent violet and test it out with the red, violet and red. I love how those two are mixing. That's going to make a really gorgeous color. Okay. I'll repeat it up here. And then I'm going to carry this over like this and maybe do some line work like that. Take some of the black. and just bring in a little bit of dark there and there, just in little areas, because I don't want this to go too dark, but I would like some accents. Then I'm gonna take my white and really cover up this bare paper. And then I'll do some blending. Okay, there we go. So now, now this one has much more of a emphatic composition just because I had larger areas of paint. You can kind of see that, um, the difference between this and this. And the difference is really high contrast. If I were to keep this very light, where it is light now, and then blend into the purple, and maybe do more minimum blending, then I would keep like this composition is is pretty much um, not wouldn't change that much but i can still like blend from this purple to the black to the red and then into this purple again to make it interesting um, i like some of these edges of the stick itself that feel almost like a dry brush so i don't i don't want to over blend i mean you know, everybody has their own way, like how much they want to blend, but, but it's a choice. If you don't want to over blend, you have to stop yourself from going too far. And here I've got the red and I want to go darker. So get a shade. Come into this a little bit. Like that. And maybe I want a little bit of gray in here. So I've got this, um, the black on my finger and I'm going to mix it with the white. So it's just not quite so white. So now I've got a beautiful violet gray and I might want to soften a few edges, but not all of them. And take the white again and just come in here. And to get a tint of that red. Nothing exact because I'm using my fingers here. And then come in with a pencil. You can cover up some of the pencil. Sometimes that graphite will smear a little bit. So um, come in with a line there and take the silicone tool and see if I can lift any of that. Yeah, that works out really well. It's a good way to kind of mix and blend and connect the different areas of the composition. Again, just all in the spirit of play. I think I like some of this um, violet, a little bit more of that.
Okay, so that's really fun. I'm going to back up the camera. Um, all an experiment, just trying these uh, of, of selection of Paul de Maris oil sticks together, but wow, they're beautiful, and they do come in these containers, and I do like to store them in them. They're easy, keeps everything clean, and they're a good size. They're not too large, so, you know, they're more affordable, and let's see, here is my transparent violet. Yeah, it keeps things nice and clean. So you get the picture. If you've ever worked with RNF pigment sticks, um, this is really a different experience because I'd say these are, uh, I, I do know that they dry a little faster for one and they're they're soft and luscious and you're gonna save a little bit of money by using them. I love RNF pigment sticks um, also, but uh, these are, there's some really interesting colors that Paul has put together and so again, I do encourage you to check them out. I think you'd really like them. So there you go. Four different palettes. And yeah, so I encourage you to have fun with these. Thanks, everyone. Bye now.